Hey guys, it's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to be creating ourselves a little macro keyboard using the Raspberry Pi Pico. So let's get started. Now, if you guys haven't seen my previous videos before on the Raspberry Pi Pico, I actually made a little playlist that you could check out. And one of the things that I did mention on my first impressions video was to create a macro keyboard using the Raspberry Pi Pico. And we're finally at the stage where we could do this. Now, if you've seen my previous videos on uh, getting started on how I set up this computer using Tawny, as well as the MicroPython and also CircuitPython on my previous video with the auto clicking, we now established a base on what we can use to create this macro keyboard. So the stuff I'm gonna be using today obviously is the Raspberry Pi Pico, which you can actually pick up from Micro Center locally. And I've also picked up a set of these little tactile switches also from Micro Center for $4.49. So yeah, these things are pretty good. Now to jump into my desktop, again, I was telling you, if you are interested in how I set this up, just pop over to one of my previous videos on setting the Tawny up and you'll be at the environment that I'm at. Now I don't have to transfer anything over because we are using what we had before with the mouse auto clicker uh, project, which means I do have my Adafruit CircuitPy HID pre-installed. And I also pulled this up because we are gonna need to know the GPIOs. So to begin, we are gonna need to code ourselves a little like hello world project for the button just so we know we could detect it and detect a button press. We're gonna start off with a very simple code, which is import time, import digital IO, and import board. Those are the three things we really need to know how we could detect the button. Now we do have to set this up, so we're gonna call this button one pin equals board dot GP 15. Now for the GPIOs, that's how come I have this grid over here. You could see it's GP zero, GP one, and keeps going down. And GP 15 is on the bottom left. I like to start on the corner so it's easier for me to determine. And then on the right side, you could also use these GPIOs as well. So GP16, GP17, up to you. So you could decide what GPIO you want to use. For me, I'm just gonna be using 15. Next up, we have to assign what the GPIO pin is gonna be. So we're gonna call it button equals digital IO dot digital uh, in out. It is case sensitive, so just bear that in mind. And I am going to be, this is going to be btn1 underscore pin. Technically, when you're coding this, uh, having all the variables up on top is easier to change around if you needed to. But if you wanted to shorten up the code, you could actually just put this in here and get rid of the variable all complete. But if we're going to be playing around with this, I'd rather keep a list of variables so I know that I could change button 1 to GPIO 15 or 16 if I wanted to. Now... Let's place that back in. And we assign the GPIO to a digital in and out. We're gonna to have to tell its input direction. So we're gonna do BTN, oh, let me put one here, equals, nope, BTN dot direction equals digital IO dot direction dot input because that's what we're going to be doing when we press a button we're getting input not output like an led we're not powering something now here is the time where you actually have to make a decision on what you want the direction to be or uh, what it's set at when you first start so it's called the pull so btn1 pull equals digital io dot pull dot you could either set it up or down so in everything we do in coding circuit boards or stuff like this, it has a zero and a one, true or false, on or off. Like your computer, you know how that on switch has a zero and a one? That's basically what we're doing. Do we want it to be in a true state or a false state when we are coding everything? So if we put it into up, that means that GPIO will have a value of one, which means it's true. That means it's gonna be outputting or actually have voltage going through that GPIO. Now, if I was to change this to down, that means that pin is actually on a grounded state or a zero, and we will have to send power to it to switch it from zero to one. So I hope that makes sense. And this also affects how we code something. So I'm gonna kind of give you an example. Let's uh, move on to our while loop, or which is the main program. So while true, here is where we would actually define how this will work. So if, see, since I have it down, that means it's false, right? If 
btn1.value, that means if it becomes true, then perform this task. And in this task, it's gonna be print button one pressed, okay? And then now we will wanna sleep it. So time.sleep 0.1, so it doesn't go too fast. It gives us a little bit of breathing room. So we would set that time there. So what happens is, if we were to switch this to up, the code over here would be not true, okay? So that means if not true, because it's always gonna be in a true state if you're up, then do work. But since we are gonna use down, uh, we don't need to declare that, which means it's three less characters in your code. Again, depending on what you're planning to do. So now let's switch over to the board and I'll show you the board connection. The first thing we need to worry about is the button that we're gonna be using. And as you can see, there's actually pins here, 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 and here in an H pattern. And the button itself is, in, is a gate, you could say. It, it will close and open the gate. Right now the gate is opened and when you push this button, it'll close the gate. That means all the connections will connect. And here you could apply ground or ground here and it's the same and here you could apply something else and it'll be the same but you can't plug in power here and ground here because it's going to connect so with that being said i am actually going to plug this into my gpio board like so and because we have this set it up as down and we have to send power to the gpio pin 15 looking at the pin out we know that the fifth pin one, two, three, four, five. This one is power. So we're gonna send this to this GP, this pin right there. And because we worked with GPIO 15, we're gonna put that there and we're gonna connect it here. Or we could connect it here, it will be fine. Either way, that's, that's gonna work. So now we have the connections going. Uh, we could save our code and now hit the stop button real quick and then hit the play button. So now, if I was to press this button, button one is pressed. You see that? Also, what's cool about this, if you wanted to stick an LED onto it, you can actually just uh, take an LED, ground it, and I know one, two, and then the third one is ground, and this one would be power. And as you can see, I have it like set up, not pretty. And if I was to set up the button, it will actually also power the LED this way we don't have additional coding, you know, because it's grounded right now and it will send power as soon as we hit the button. Anyway, that's a story for another day. Now that we know that it's detecting our button presses and our code is working, we can move on to creating this macro we were talking about. Back to the code, as you may notice, I only have this set up for one button. Later down in the future, we could just copy and paste and we could set up as many buttons as we want, but we mainly want to play around with one button first so we don't get ahead of ourselves. So. It's time to actually import the rest of our library. So we're gonna import USB HID, import actually from Adafruit underscore HID keyboard, import capital keyboard from Adafruit underscore HID key codes we wanna import. So import capital key code and now we could declare what our usb hid interface is going to be so let's do it under the variables we'll keep that up there and in here we're going to do keyboard equals keyboard usb underscore hid dot devices okay so now we declared that and we're able to use our keyboard and now we could actually have it do something. So let's make it do alt tab every time I press the key. It's still gonna print button one. So I know button one has been pressed and we're gonna go keyboard.press key code dot alt and key code dot tab. Okay, so with the comma, it actually separates it into two different. You can set it as many as you want. Well, not as many as you want, but you could actually set multiple key combinations. So if I wanted to do Alt Shift Tab, I would actually put another comma and put key code dot shift in there. And how do I know what this is? Head back over to the Adafruit library. And if you go into, where is it? HID right over here. There's these Python codes. Now in keyboard itself, it actually gives you what you can do with it. So we have press, 
which is what we just did here. And we also have release. So we know that when we press it, we still have to release it or it's gonna stay on alt tab forever. And there's release all and send. And uh, that's basically it. So we have send, release all, release and press. And because we're trying to do macro keys, we wanna press it and then release it, not just type in a key. Now, as far as key codes go, pop back out of there, go into key codes. And this will actually give you what you can do with the key code. So if I wanted to type the letter A, I would do keycode.a, or if I wanted to do return, enter, or something like backslash, you would type that in. So it would be keycode.backslash, or if you wanted like function keys like f1, f2, keycode.f1, f2. So if your key code that is not mentioned here, you might want to dig it up, but you can actually modify this file if you need to for different key codes. But yeah, you even got Mac codes like f13, f14, stuff like that. So continuing with the code, I would do time, dot sleep and I would give it about one zero point one so it gives it time to like actually press the key and then keyboard dot press oh sorry release now you could actually release all but that's not going to work in an environment where you're pressing multiple hotkeys or macro keys so you want to be able just to release the keys that you are pressing right now which is key code dot alt and key code.tab. This way it won't interfere with other buttons that you have valued at. And once you are done with this, it will go back into sleep and that should be it. So with this little bit of code, we should be able to alt tab and create our first macro key pressing that button. So let's give that a try. I'm gonna save this, uh, stop it first, then save it and then stop it again and then hit play. So now if I press this, it should alt tab. Here's a, here's a good example. There you go. You see how it's going through and bringing the file of the folder back and forth because alt tab is actually happening at this point. So now I got a macro key that essentially just alt tabs for me. So if you're gonna use this for OBS, you probably want maybe something like shift, you know, shift then um, key pad one. Let me see if that's correct. Let me see keypad one i would actually have to type out the word one so keypad one and same goes for here it'll be keypad one and it'll be shift over here and this will actually trigger the shift and keypad one button which you will have to memorize on your obs all right moving on let's how, how do we add more buttons so to add more buttons we would just do copy this code and remember spacing is very important in Python. I would just copy this code and change this to button two and then change whatever you want this to be. So button two, button two, and I am not gonna do anything on button two value. Same goes for here. I would copy this command and paste it. There is definitely a more elegant way to do this. Uh, especially if you run it on a list or an array and then you can loop through the array, but uh, we're not about that life right now. So you see how I'm changing all the button ones to button two and in here, btn2 underscore pin, and I would do board.gp14, which is the next button right up here. So you see how it's 14 over here. And there, I would have button one and button two all set up and button one and button two. So now I'm gonna try that as well. I'm gonna pop over to the Raspberry Pi Pico, slap in a second button, take this pin, put it into GPIO 14, and then I will still need to power this. So I'm just gonna piggyback off the first pin over here. And there we have our setup, two buttons with the two GPIOs, and then it's both powered. And let's save the code. Oh, I gotta stop it first. Save the code and I could press play. And if I was to press the first button, it'll alt tab. Well, it's gonna do shift key code keypad one because that's how I programmed it. And button two, you see how it's now button two coming up? And the more buttons you want, you just need to keep copy and pasting and adding more to your code and adding more GPIOs. You have up to what, 28 buttons you could put in. So you could do up to 28 GPIOs if you needed a big keyboard, if you have something like this. You could essentially set it up with four buttons, five buttons, however much you want, and have your macro keys go from there. 
Okay, with it all said and done, this is how I currently have my setup with my Raspberry Pi Pico right now. And basically what this is, is uh, I got the mute key for my Discord so I could just mute everything. Uh, I got scroll up and scroll down on these buttons. And then I also got volume up and volume down. Nothing dramatic, it's just something I'm playing around with. But yeah, you could program all your macro keys to do something like this basically. And yeah, you could add more, two series, whatever you want. Anyway, that's it for me guys. And if you guys really enjoyed this type of series where it's like code with me and I'm showing you what I'm doing as far as the coding wise, let me know down in the comments below. And if you guys got any other ideas for projects for the Raspberry Pi Pico or even Arduino or the ESPs, let me know down in the comments below. I've been having a lot of fun just coding this stuff and teaching you guys. If you guys have any questions about this particular project, let me know down in the comments below. Also, if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say in my Nerd Cave, hack till it hearts.